let's get into the prayer that I've been talking to you about. Um, this is our 123rd prayer session since we've been doing them on Thursdays. And uh, as I've said, we've learned about various types of prayers. We've done the Ho'opono prayer, the Hawaiian prayer. We've done the uh, the Hindu prayers uh, with Vaughn. We've done the First Nation prayers with White Cloud and we've done the Lord's prayers. We've done the Aramaic. We've done various types of prayers. Uh, scripture says that uh, pray always with all kinds of prayers. And so whatever it takes to get the job done, that's what we are saying here. And we're introducing various types of prayers so that you can experience the power of spirit moving and working through everything. Now, this specific prayer here, this is a um, continuation of a series of messages that we've been doing that we started with numerology. And we, we dealt with the number 42. Now, uh, the number 42 is a very powerful mystical number that you hardly ever hear people talk about. And um, this 42, uh, I guess some scientists put the number 42 in the quantum computer some time ago and asked it, what does it mean? And the answer came back that it is the ultimate uh, answer to the questions of life. It is the meaning of life. Now we know throughout Torah and throughout the uh, New Testament, uh, we find the number 42 that is hidden there. You find that the Hebrew Israelites, they had 42 stations uh, that they had to go through before they could enter into the promised land. And these 42 stations, they represented uh, the 42 letter name of God. Okay, that's one of the hidden meanings behind that you, you probably may not have known. Then you get to uh, the book of Daniel and he talks about the 100, 1,000, uh, 260 days or 42 months. So there's the number 42 again in prophetic writings. Then you get to the New Testament, you find that Matthew chapter one, that Yeshua comes through 42 generation. That 42nd is like a code for uh, the generation that we are today. And then you find also in Revelations, it speaks of the 42 uh, months again or three and a half years or 1260 days so we find right from beginnings that the number 42 is hidden in there and it is coded now the really really biggest part of this mystery as i mentioned before is that uh in the book of genesis uh when the most high was creating everything he used uh these 42 uh letters to create everything of the 22 letter of the Hebrew alphabet and a combination, I guess you could call it a Kabbalistic formula. And that's how we get these 42 letters here. So I'm going to just kind of briefly show you this. I believe you can see it on your screen here now, uh, this, and that will help you to understand this. Now, what you're going to see here is seven lines here. These lines represent the seven days of the week, starting with Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Shabbat or Saturday. Okay. And then you'll find that there is a prayer or there are six words in each line in Hebrew. Okay. The six words and six times seven is 42. So there we have it here, the 42 letter uh, name of God. They're very mystical, very powerful. And you don't have to really speak Hebrew to, um, to use it. Okay, but I am going to kind of maybe share some of the uh, words with you or the letters with you to help you in case you want to do chants with it. Now, don't pay too much attention to this part here. It has said uh, Gavura, uh, Tiferet, uh, Nekzak, uh, Hod, Yesod, and Malkut. I'm not going to really talk about that. Uh, that is part of the Kabbalistic tree of life. And... Um, just for you could to understand, as we said, this is Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Shabbat, Saturday. So Hasid here, uh, you're going to be meditating as you are using this prayer and stuff. Hasid basically, it means kindness and mercy. 
kindness and mercy, like the favor of God. So when you are doing this prayer here, you want also to intent and, and to realize uh, the, the favor and the kindness, mercy of God that's upon your life. Uh, to garuva, uh, yeah, gavura, gavura, it means judgment. And so you can't really have righteous judgment without mercy. Okay, that's the way the universe and the most high operates, okay? So, and this judgment here is not as in some condemning way, but this gives the idea of, of uh, discernment and making right decisions and choices. And so we have that. And so then you go to Tiferet, which is meaning beauty. And so as you put this together, you see that out of mercy and out of the proper choices and judgment, there is a beauty that comes forth here. And then the fourth is Nezak, okay, Nezak. And that uh, represents basically victory, victory. Another meaning is eternity, okay, eternity. So victory and eternity. So it is a progression that you are experiencing with this meditation and with this prayer. And then there's hold. Hold, it means basically splendor and glory. You see the progression of this that is taking place in the meditation. Okay, and then the sixth day is Yesod. Yesod is foundation. Now you have the very foundation of uh, this experience. And then lastly, Shabbat, you have Makuth. That is the kingdom. Nine is the kingdom, the power and the glory. Okay, and so that's that. I'm not really dealing with this, but you can hold those thoughts and those meanings in your mind as you are meditating and as you are using this. So here on the first line, you have uh, this Hebrew phrase. And again, I don't speak Hebrew. I kind of study it a little bit and I am going to step out and I am going to pronounce it. And I will probably mispronounce some of the words, but at least a try. Okay. And so uh, I am going to do that so that when you are studying this, you can understand it and understand it. And so uh, it becomes more powerful. And then I'm going to uh, pronounce these letters here, which are mantras, which are names of God, because this um, Kabbalistic prayer or this Kabbalistic formula, it is made up of the first letter of each word. The first letter of each word, some of you have heard of the Bible codes and you understand that in the Torah that you can put it into the computer or you can just look at it if you read Hebrew and you can go diagonally, you can go vertical, you can go uh, horizontal, you can go all kinds of ways and there are different codes where it can be read in this powerful Hebrew language that is a language of spirit, is a language of light that the Most High created everything with. And because we have the breath of life within us, we can use that same breath to create our world, to bring things into manifestation. That's what this prayer is about, is the prayer of manifestation, it's the prayer of miracles, it's the prayer of creating, using your creative power along with these Hebrew words to bring into being. And then at the end here, you see that this prayer, and you can put it in your own words, you are uh, removing time, space, and motion. So you're disconnecting from the 3D uh, world, if you will. And you're removing the negative influences of the physical matter from your life, things that are within and without. And you're opening yourself to receive unconditional love. That's what this first line is all about, using these uh, powerful letter names of God. And the realization is, and the key to, to full manifestation or the secret of bringing things into full manifestation is unconditional love unconditional love and so if i were to read this prayer in my attempt at reading uh, hebrew i would go like this and you can read it at any rhythm that you desire and make it a chant for yourself and but it would go like this anna bikot jadulat yaminikar tatir 
that root ra. Okay, so you would go Anabakot, Jadula, Yaminikar, Tatir, Zerura. Okay, so you got the first line here. Now, if we're going to use the first letter of each word, this is what they would sound like if you're going to chant them. You would have Aleph, Bet, Gamil, Yod, Tav, Sadhi. Those are the first letter of each of these words. Okay. Now the second line here is Kobel Renat Umchasa Venu Tahar Renu Nora. That is Kobel Renat Umchasa Venu Tahar Renu Nora. If you were to chant these, the first letter of each of these, you would be chanting Kuf, Resh, Ayin, Shin, Tet, Nun. Kuf, Resh, Ayin, Shin, Tet, Nun. And that prayer is, and that word is saying that you are releasing or you are asking to be released from the restrictions and uh, this system that causes us to react in negative ways. Releasing yourself from triggers, if I can just bring it into modern day language. This is closing the gates of Hasatan. This is closing the gates in your consciousness, closing the gates in your life that you know of that could allow negative forces or energies to manifest in. And this is letting go of all limited thoughts and releasing yourself into the unlimited potential of God. That's what this second line of prayer is basically saying. That's the hidden message that is in Kuf Resh Ayin Shin Tet Nun. You're releasing, very powerful. Now the third line here, if you were to pray this prayer, would go like this. Nagibor Dasha Yukadeka Kavavok Shamrim. So we have it here. Nagibor Desha Yukadeka Kavavok Shorim. And then here are the um, letter names okay, for this. Noon Gimel Dalit. Yod Kaf Shin. Nun Gimel Dalit Yod Kaf Shin. Okay, and this is the meaning of that prayer. And I'm just paraphrasing. You're opening the channels of substance, the things that you have been desiring, praying about, meditating on. Now, with this prayer, with this invocation, and with the chanting of these. Uh, six letters here, letter names here, you're opening the channel so that the substance can come through into your material world. You're bringing it from the etheric world into the material world, taking back the light we gave to the negative side. You are taking back your power. You are standing in yourself, realizing that you deserve to receive everything that you ask for and lastly removing hate for no reason so you're releasing yourself from all bitterness hatred anxiety and all of the things of the negative realm so that you can have space to receive it okay, let's go to the fourth one here go to the fourth line here the fourth day here is what it would basically say. Barkem, Tarahem, Rakami, Zarakateka, Tamid Golem. Barkem, Tarahem, Rakami, Zakateka, Tamid Golem. So, what are you saying here? You're using these 
letters here and you are saying Beth, Teth, Resh, Sodhi, Tav, Gemel. Beth, Teth, Resh, Sodhi, Tav, Gemel. So this is the power to persevere, the power to move forward. You are asking for the power to move forward and also to preserve that which has come from the etheric, the substance that you are receiving, that which you've asked for, the manifested prayer, and the power to persevere and to move forward in that. The fifth line or the fifth day, it would go like this. Shazim Kudesh, Bero Tuveka, Nahil Arateka. Shazim Kadesh, Bero Tuveka, Nahil Arateka. Using these letters here, this is what you are saying. You can chant Heth, Kuf, Beth, Tek. Noon Ayin Heth Kuf Beth Tek Noon Ayin And this is what you're asking for that your third eye to be open that you could see clearly with the eye of the spirit, that you would make the connection between the realms of cause and effect the things that you are bringing forth into reality and the things that you need to do to bring them into this reality, that you would get the big picture. This is what you're asking for. And you can put this in your own words. Give me the big picture. Help me to see the things I don't see. Give me deep insight. Okay, now the sixth day, this powerful prayer you're doing and this is what you would basically say right here yaki gea lam chapine zokrai kadusha teka yaki gea lam chapine zokrai kadusha teka Right? And then these letter names here, you can chant, you can speak again and again. Yod, Gimel, Lamed, Pe, Zayin, Kuf. Yod, Gimel, Lamed, Pe, Zayin, Kuf. And what are you saying? I want the power, I want the ability to spread spirituality throughout the world. In other words, at this point, the manifestation you are receiving, but you're not receiving this manifestation, you're not creating just for yourself. But now you are wanting to project this blessing, give this blessing to the world. So you're asking spirit, to show you how you can share your spirituality and enlighten others. And as it says, particularly through Kabbalah, the hidden truth, that which goes beyond the religious ideas and traditions, you are asking for wisdom and power so that you can share this. The seventh line here, Shabbat, okay? You would pray it this way. Shavetanu Kabel Ushma Zad Akinu Yodia Tal Alamu Shavatanu Kabel Ushma Zad Akitinu Yodia Te Alamu and this 
line here, you would see the letters, the Hebrew letter names. Shin, Kuf, Wa, Sadhi, Yod, Tav. Shin, Kuf, Wa, Sadhi, Yod, Tav. This is the power to manifest things in the right way. The power to manifest things in the right way and the renewal and restoration of your spirit, soul, and body. It's a very powerful prayer. And it ends basically with this. Baruch Shem Kavad Malchuto Alam Ba'ed. Basically, you're blessing the name and giving glory to God in his kingdom forever and ever. This is the Kabbalistic prayer. And as I said, chanting these letters that I just gave you and praying this, very powerful, the power of manifestation, the power of creation. Experience this power and see things change in your life. Blessings.